Hello, um, my name is Dave Franklin, and I am a Microsoft certified trainer in Windows uh, products. I'm also a Microsoft MVP in Windows Expert IT Pro, and today I'm going to be installing the new Windows 8 developer preview uh, that was made available by Microsoft at the Build Conference in September of 2011. I'm going to be installing this particular operating system as a virtual machine in Windows Server 2008 R2 Edition Hyper-V. So, if we get started, you can see right here uh, on the machine I have the ISOs for both the Windows 8 Developer Preview and the Windows Server 8 Developer Preview. We're, of course, going to be using the Developer Preview here. So, I have Hyper-V up and running. And what I'm going to do at this time is create a new virtual machine. And this brings up the new virtual machine wizard. And it tells you a few things about what you need to do um, to create that virtual machine. But I'm going to click Next on this and give it a name. And in this case, I'm just going to call it Win8. Just Win8. And the default location for Hyper-V is going to be within program data uh, on the C drive under a subfolder called Microsoft with its own subfolder called Windows and another subfolder called Hyper-V underneath that. I want to change this location. I have two large SATA hard drives on the machine and what I'd like to do is put it on the second drive just so it doesn't contend with the operating system in any way. So I'm going to put it in a folder called Program Files and Microsoft Learning and I'm going to create a new folder here and just call it Windows 8 and so that's where it's going to go to. I'm going to click on Next and give it some memory and I'm going to give this about two gigabytes of memory so I'm looking at oh, 2048 approximately. Click on Next I am going to let it connect to the external network that I've established here on Hyper-V or even have no network connection. Click Next on that and now we're going to give the virtual hard disk file a name. It's going to be called Win8 and we see where it's located in its own folder called Window Win8 underneath Windows 8 and the size of this so we can use some disk size. At this time I'm going to reduce that size down to 80 gigabytes just don't want it to be so big and I could also use an existing hard drive if I had created one, created one or even attach one later on as part of the process but in this case 80 gigs uh, creating the virtual hard drive called win8.vhd click on next. Now very important I'm going to install an operating system and because as I showed you before I had that folder called ISO with the uh, two ISOs in it I'm going to select the install an operating system from a boot CD DVD ROM and the image file I'll browse for it will be on the D drive in the ISOs and it will be the developer preview the 64-bit English and now I'm just going to say next and then it gives me all my particular preferences that I put in and click on finish and it will create the virtual machine for me at this time and what I need to do is go down through the Hyper-V Manager, find that virtual machine, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and connect to it. And now that it's available, I'll go ahead and turn it on. And when I turn it on, uh, which is the same as powering on the machine, it should find then the ISO file as if it was a uh, CD or DVD placed in the DVD drive and actually boot from it. So let's see that happen. There it's connecting, and now it's finding the ISO. Very good. Let's put this up here. It loaded the files. Give it a second or two to finish loading the uh, Windows pre-execution environment, or the WinPE for Windows 8. 
and here it is. So we get our initial install screen. Um, fortunately, in this case, of course, our language is English. The time and currency is English United States, and the keyboard is U.S. And that's appropriate. So I'm going to click Next. And now uh, we actually have the ability to get into the Windows recovery environment through Repair Your Computer, but we're going to use the install now since we are doing an installation. And we're actually going to install Windows 8 into the VHD that we just created so it can boot up as a Windows 8 computer. Okay, and we're going to accept the license terms. Click Next. We're not going to do an upgrade. We have no other operating system on this since we just created it. So we're going to click Custom. And as you see, we have disk zero unallocated space. And that's fine. Uh, I'm going to click Next on that. Because it is Hyper-V, I don't have to load a driver. It already found it. Um, it's part of the integrated devices that we have with Hyper-V. Now you see it's copying the files. It will expand those files. It will install the features, updates, and complete the installation. I'm going to pause this recording at this time because otherwise it's like watching paint dry. There's really not a lot that we can do except let it run, it, run its course. Um, and when it's completed this part, then we'll go ahead and uh, resume the recording this. Okay, now the computer um, has finished the copying over the files and it's restarting at this time. I should say the virtual machine is restarting at this time, not the computer. And I will not press any key to boot from CD or DVD. And there it goes with the initial load. Now what's going to happen is the system will uh, set up an account to use. Uh, do keep in mind that like Windows 7 and Vista and the other kernel 6 operating systems, client operating systems, that is, the administrator account has been already created but it is disabled by default. So we're not going to use that account. The first account that we do put on the machine will have administrative privileges that it will belong to the local administrators group. And we can call it anything we want. In, in many cases, an individual user installing their own operating system, or if they're using the out of box experience that comes with an operating system uh, at least initialized, pre, pre initialized, and loaded by an OEM for any hardware they buy will initially come up and ask it for the username and that username of course will be the administrator on that local machine. So as we see it's going through the devices load. Since this is a virtual machine it will be using the uh, integrated components for devices that come with Windows Hyper-V. And now it's gone through that list of devices and procured the proper drivers for them. I also find that the driver process is much, much smoother than any beta operating system I've used up to this point. Now we see it's gone through another reboot. What I need to do, okay, I'm just going to let that go without pressing a key. But I can take that off now simply by um, ejecting it. It won't come up again if it reboots. And for the first time, it will bring up Windows 8. 
to the point that we can see the new interface. Okay, and as it says, let's go through a few basics and give the PC a name. So in this case, we're just going to call it uh, Win8Dev and click Next. And the, and the settings, we can use the Express settings. Now, the Express settings is going to ask for your live ID and other things, other things, excuse me, in order to make the system accessible. So we're going to actually customize it. And then we'll say for, is this for networks and public places? That is, we need to provide uh, an extra level of security because we don't, have a, we don't have control over those public spaces. In our case, it's a home or work network. So we're going to say yes to that part. And now we can see uh, some of the things that are going to be left on. So latest hardware and device drivers uh, from automatic updates is turned on. Metadata and device apps for devices is turned on. Uh, protecting the PC from unsafe content and such, smart screen filtering and Internet Explorer is turned on, and the smart screen filter for file and apps is also turned on. We're going to click Next. Notice also, by the way, the a symbol here for accessibility. This is for people who have uh, hearing or sight impairment or some kind of functional impairment, so you can turn on various accessibility features. We don't need it, but that's what that is all about. In this case, we're asked for other information, send us information to help make Windows and apps better, and that's on, and join the SpyNet, and that's on, and improve Windows services by sending location data, that's on. Now, you can turn that off. Um, the apps that they're talking about here are more like Windows, uh, Windows Phone 7 apps, or Windows 7 Phone, excuse me, apps, and these particular apps, of course, might have GPS and other services in them to find things nearby. Uh, since we're just a PC, we can easily turn this off. It's not really necessary to have it on well, this virtual machine that isn't going to be going anywhere. But I'm just going to leave it off on at this time. And then we can also participate in the Customer Experience Improvement Program. That is not accessible. Only when I turn off some of these other features will that become available as a sliding on and off button. Help make Windows help content more relevant. And that just as people go and search for things and help, of course, uh, and it asks us if that help that we got, we received, was legitimate and, and practical, uh, it will actually go through a learning algorithm to make that help uh, work even better in the future. I'll just leave that on. Click Next. And, of course, the Windows error reporting is turned on by default. Uh, troubleshooting packs to fix problems like Windows 7. There's a number of troubleshooting packs available to us. The Internet Explorer compatibility view uh, is turned on by default. Share information with apps and that would let uh, it add things, name and account picture and the location. Again, this is much more like a phone type functionality or let's say a device type functionality. We don't really need it on this particular virtual machine we're loading, but I'm just going to leave those up for now. Click Next. And now we have a login, and what it expects us to put in here is our Windows Live email address. And it will use that to sync up. If we don't want to do that, and for the purposes of what I'm doing, I want it just to be like a, a regular operating system, we have the do, don't want to log on with a Windows Live ID hyperlink. So let's click that, and then we're going to make a local account. So we have the choice between Live ID and a local account. So it's very important. I want to click on local account. And I'm just going to call this local account. Remember, we can't use administrator. So I'm going to call it admin and give it a number. In this case, just zero. It's the first one. And I'm going to assign the standard Windows, uh, excuse me, standard Microsoft official courseware password, which is capital P, a dollar dollar W zero RD. And I'll just call this standard MOC. And click Next. And it will go through the finalization of the settings.
which is based on the wizard that we just ran. And here it comes up and logs me in. And preparing my desktop. Actually, preparing my metro environment and desktop. Now this might take a minute or two. Okay, so there's the, we have the Metro interface with the various applications on it. We can also get to the desktop and go back to the Metro interface. So we have a fully functional Windows 8 developer preview installed as a virtual machine. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video demonstration at this point.